What's up? October Scorpio or November Scorpio? A question asked by another fantastic supporter. So shout out to June Williams 1007. He or she, I don't know if that's a boy name or girl name. June Williams. It's a girl name, right? What's the difference in October Scorpio and November Scorpio? Who's worse? Well, if I were to be biased, I would say October Scorpio is worse because I'm an October Scorpio. One of my best friends is October Scorpio. I'm probably one of the most recent menaces to um, affect our society in such a way that is quite diabolical, might I say. Every saint has a past. <laughs> And every sinner has a future. So, <laughs> welcome back to the Scorpio Scriptures Podcast. I'm your host, Master J. This is where we talk about astrology, all things Scorpio related, and the expansion of consciousness. So, today, I'm going to expand your consciousness way further than we normally go on the Scorpio Scriptures. And I'm going to bring in some of the works from my mentor's mentor. So, Master J has been mentored by many men. Now, one of my mentors, his name is Rom Wills. Shout out to Uncle Rom. And Rom Will's mentor is Master Yao Morris. So grand mentor, you can you can suppose some of my understanding comes from him. So I'm gonna quote his book, Amonmir. Amon I may be pronouncing that wrong. If you guys want to get this book, it's called A M A N M E R E, the natural blueprint for sexual relationships. So we're gonna dive into a deeper level and explain a little bit about October Scorpios and November Scorpios. So in the book, uh, Master Yao, this is all credited to Master Yao, right? I'm going to be reading directly from the book and let you guys get a good understanding. So Master Yao brings up on, there not only are zodiac signs, there are also what he calls the heavenly archetypes or the sexual archetypes. So you are born into this world with planetary influences, but we are also born with what we can call uh, heavenly deity influences, right? Your celestial body. So there are many things. This is a real deeper thing, right? And going to personalities and going to the, uh, I believe it's Chinese, what we call the Bagua and with the elements. So Master Yao goes into the seven heavenly deities. So I'm going to read this right here and you're going to understand a little more about October Scorpios and November Scorpios. Okay, so let's get into it. The seven sexual archetypes. Heaven is a part of the blueprint for natural living. Some religions believe that we will interact with heaven upon our death or transitioning from a living body. But there is a constant communion always going on between heaven and earth. In fact, all life vibrations are a product of and in resonance with one of several seven primal vibrations anchored in heaven. God creates, changes, and causes everything to do or to be via seven principal modalities. There are seven agents of execution through which God works. Herein, we refer to these seven agents as the Ark Deities. In the ancient Hebrew tradition, they are called the seven archangels. They are mentioned in the sacred Kabbalah. The Old Testament is based on this tradition. In the ancient tradition of the Akin, a principal spiritual sy system of West Africa, they are known as the Osoro. These are the star deities or sky gods. So let's move on here. All persons that are born into one of these seven archetypes contain identical qualities with all the other persons born into that archetype, regardless of race, age, or place of birth. The seven deities provide the link between science and the spiritual world. They are what is the primary cause to everything. So he's talking about this calendar goes into 52 days of the year versus the astrology going just about month to month, just about month to month, somewhere in the middle of the month. So you can be born a Scorpio, but you can be born on a different heavenly archetype. Or you can be born as a Libra and have the heavenly archetype with a Scorpio. But you might be, this is what can explain November Scorpios and October Scorpios and September, September Libras and so on and so on. So now we're gonna factor in another layer. So we're going to go on to the Scorpios here, which is archetype five, known as the architects. So October 16th to December 6th. So you can be a Scorpio, a Libra, or even a Sagittarius, but also fit into archetype five. So you see how this gets a little more complex here. So I'm going to break this down for you. 
and we're gonna get into the November versus October Scorpios and how this relates to them. <coughs> the men and women born between October 16th and December 6th are unusual. Indeed they are, aren't they Scorpios are quite the freaking weirdos. They are the coordinators of social processes. They conduct the orchestra of society. These have an inner talent for combining the many factions of some complex system into an ordered pattern. They can bring harmony to a system that is in disarray. These persons are people architects. They are to groups of people as an architect is to a building. Sound like Scorpios, anybody? This is the archetype of the architect. It is the archetype of healing and consecration. This archetype has an affinity for the throat chakra and the thyroid gland. The members of this archetype are hard to understand. Their personality is very complex. There are many levels to their persona in keeping with the tone of this archetype. They can interact successfully with members of the opposite sex who may not be on the same social level as themselves. Like the members of group 4, much of their true nature lies hidden under the surface. What appears on the surface may be a facade or veneer. Sound like Mr. Scorpio, anybody? They may really have greater talents and more positive qualities than what we had initially thought. But they also may harbor deep secrets or traits that are not so positive. Sound like Mr. Scorpio, anybody? The same talent that gives them the ability to bring structure and order within a group also predisposes them to be manipulative under certain influences. Their tendency to be man manipulative depends on their personality structure. They are philosophical, deep, frank, and determined, and most of all, they are secretive. There is one aspect that should be noted about this group. Those born in the second phase of this period, from November 11th to December 6th, bring into this life special spiritual gifts from their past life portfolio. They may yearn for most of their life to find something and not know what it is. The answer for them lies in the past. This archetype has an affinity for the psychopathic personality structure and to a lesser extent, the schizoid personality. They are resistant to the formation of the masochistic personality. Now let's get into the male of archetype 5, aka Mr. Scorpio. Architects male. The men of archetype 5 express their masculinity more in a macho way than in a paternal way. They can, however, make excellent fathers if paired with the right mate. The men of archetype 5 are an enigma to many women. So you can say that again. The men of archetype 5 are an enigma to many women. They may not open up to women easily, and just when you think you know him, he does something out of character. Just as the men of archetype 1 are warlike in their urge to dominate, the men of archetype 3 are warlike in the political sense. Those in group 5 are warlike in their determination. They go beyond being stubborn, especially if they have the psychopathic personality. In matters of principle, they will stand their ground against a storm of adversity. The woman is cautioned not to go head to head against them on these issues. She must learn to lose some battles in order that she can win the war. In this regard, her feminine charms will always win where her mental challenge failed. The determination of the men of Archetype 5 allows them to stay with long involved campaigns until the end. But on the other hand, they are not easily convinced to let go of bad ideas or abandon improper conduct. Another trait of this archetype is self-assurance. Some of these men may even be a bit cocky without justification. <laughs> True, these men do not sit on the fence of life. They see life in shades of black and white and call a spade a spade. They do not approach relationships with lukewarm feelings but are either hot or cold. If they believe in a cause, they will support it with passion. If they believe in a woman, they will fight to the bitter end on her behalf. But getting them to believe is the problem, for they do not trust the opposite sex easily. They do not trust much at all easily. These men have the capacity to deal easily with complex scenarios where others become dismayed and confused. They are complex, dedicated, and ingenious. In society, they have the potential to organize a renaissance or conversely, social upheaval. And they are the same way in sexual relationships. <laughs> yeah, he can fix all the problems in your life or twist your last nerves. Yep. The persons of the fifth period have a destructive element within their inner nature. It is the disp disposition of the cold of winter, killing the leaves to make room for the spring. 
Without dissolution, there can be no rebuilding. But this negative aspect of their nature can become misdirected. If the woman has an affair, in some cases, it is best to be kept a secret. If she has enemies, be careful how and when you share this information with him. He takes confrontation very seriously. Don't let his outer composure fool you. There is a volcano underneath that snow-capped mountain. Sometimes they keep too many secrets. They may love you but not want you to know. They may have problems at work but do not want to share them with you. They may adore a certain dress that you wear, but never let on. The trick is to ask good questions. Read between the lines, don't assume anything and don't take him for granted. Find out about his past. Force him to open up to you. Most of all, he responds with sincerity. There is a difference between the men born in the first half of this period and those in the second half of this period. October versus November Scorpios, basically. Each group is attracted to different types of women. Those born in the first half admire females who have an erotic flavor. They love it when an intelligent woman challenges them. They like to argue with their mates and these heated discussions are harmless. The next day, it is as if it did not happen. That is very true. Uh, Scorpio men, they do like to be, the October Scorpios, they do like to be stimulated in that way. That is very true. I love when a woman can bite back. That means she can handle herself in the streets. <laughs> they like to argue with their mates and these heated discussions are harmless. The next day, it is after this, as if it did not happen. He tends to judge a woman based on how she handles money. Those men born into the second half are more refined and less aggressive than the others. <laughs> November Scorpios. They seek a subtle erotic eroticism in the female. They do not like confrontation at all and prefer harmony instead. They are, much they are not much concerned with her financial acumen or her intellect, but with her spiritual style. Nor are they concerned with her station in life. Regardless of where he is on the social ladder, you may find him with a woman from the, either the highest or lowest social class. So there we have it. From Grandmaster Yao Morris himself, a little deeper dive onto the November versus October Scorpio. So notes, the November Scorpios, they have spiritual gifts that they can bring into these past lives, right? Bring into their present life and their past lifetimes. And they're usually more of a seeker type, more of the privacy type. You know, a little more private, a little less like, you know, a little less like Jay, October Scorpio. Talking about stuff, right? The October Scorpio is the one who is gonna <laughs> flex on ya and strike back at ya most of the times and be very loud about it. The November Scorpio is the one who goes, Jay, why are you making Scorpio scriptures at all? Stop telling people everything. <laughs> so they're a little more calm. They're a little more mellow. A little more harmonious. Um much more likely to be naturally more spiritually advanced due to their uh, day of birth, right? Coming into this world. And their taste in women is a little different. Not as loud, right? They're not as judgmental when it comes to where their woman is. But the funny thing is, I don't think Scorpio men overall are very judgmental about where their woman comes from as long as they love them. But as you heard from Grandmaster Yao himself, he said the problem with the Scorpio the problem with the architects, the problem with the Scorpios is getting them to believe in a woman. When you can get them to believe in a woman or a cause, they will fight to it to the very end. The problem is getting them to believe and the problem is getting them to stop. But once you get the ball rolling with Scorpios, oh yeah, the ball's rolling. Until the very bitter end. So I, I hope you have heard some key, 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 key notes in that, right? Because... You can, you have just heard another layer of the Scorpio man. And it's not even about being the Scorpio man. It's about being the uh, heavenly deity archetype number five, which fits into the zodiac sign of uh, late Libras, all Scorpios, and early Sagittariuses. So this, I hope this brings another level to your understanding. And many of the things why people often say, how do you know so much about Scorpio? How do you know so much about this? I don't just study uh, the astrology line Scorpio. I study the, the human experience as well. So you can be born as a Scorpio or 
as a late Scorpio, November Scorpio, or October Scorpio, and there are reasons why it's different. It's not just because the time of the month. There are more layers to your personality. I just wanted to, uh, you know, this is a little different video. I just wanted to open your mind a little bit as you can understand yourself more and bring it to that. So shout out to uh, Rom Wills, one of Jay's mentors, and shout out to Master Yao Morris, Rom Wills' mentor, grand mentor. So I hope you appreciated that. Uh, check out his book. I believe it's on Amazon, A-M-A-N-M-E-R-E, -E, and that will teach you much about relationships way beyond just astrology. We go into the chakra systems and the, oh, I can't even remember right now. The glands, chakras, personality structures, date of birth, heavenly deities, sexual portfolio, uh, many things, right? So there are layers to understanding the human experience. Yo, what's up? It's your man, Master J. In the flesh, I'm a real person. If you enjoy the Scorpio scriptures, I'm gonna give you some more in-depth info. Check out the Scorpio Man Playbook. We just launched, you get the paperback on Amazon, and you can check out our eBooks and audiobooks all on ScorpioScriptures.com. You want to check out my second book, Master Level Alignment, How to Enter the Universal Flow of Abundance. This will help you grow uh, very much spiritually. If you like our Scorpio Scriptures artwork, like so, we've just launched on our new merch site, Scorpio Scriptures Merch, a whole collection of stickers, shirts, all these things Scorpio related. This one is my favorite here. It says hashtag by Becky. So hit the link in the description of the video below. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube. You can connect on all of our platforms there. You can DM me your questions, etc. Maybe I'll answer them or maybe I'll hashtag by Becky you. I appreciate your guys' support. This is your man Jay signing out. Peace.